Where did it go? Okay. Yeah. Drop me on the island. Bobby. Finally left. It's taken a long time to get to this island. Buangaba and the Southern Lao group. I'm going to be left here alone for 21 days. Uh, I was hope, planning to spend a month here, but um, getting here took a long time. Uh, plane, bus, plane, boat, another boat another boat just and then i had to sit in various places uh negotiating with people i was uh had to go to kambara um last which is the island just over there um and wait for three days until they could call a meeting of the uh, head men of the village and they were going to uh, uh, give the okay which they finally did this morning so it's a Monday morning and I've got 21 days to, to uh, spend on the island all by myself. Unfortunately, uh, the lovely people that I've been staying with, as lovely as they've been, oh man, it's been fantastic, the time I've had with them. Um, but they wouldn't go until they saw that I had a shelter built, so we slapped up a temporary shelter. Um, and yeah. Now they've left and it's 10 past 4 in the afternoon and this is the fantastic beautiful island that I am going to spend my 21 days at. My temporary shelter is really quite basic. Just a tarpaulin stretched over uh, a little structure that I've built that uh, I'm going to make a bed in. Uh, something that'll keep me up off the ground. Um, got a big hole at one end, so I'll get wet obviously if the rain comes pouring in, but I'm in amongst some trees, so that'll provide me with a bit of shelter. Uh, I have a bigger, larger tarpaulin, which I'm going to use to uh, collect rainwater actually, is going to be its main purpose, and it'll be my major backup if I, if I have any kind of breakage. Um, but yeah, I'm probably going to have a few goes at uh, building shelters over the three weeks. Uh, but I just want to get a bed sorted for tonight. Uh, maybe get a fire started. And um, if I get a bit, have enough light, I'll rush around and quickly see if I can find the caves. Okay, it's getting a bit dark now. So I'm going to try and light a fire with the starter. It's about getting towards six-ish. Mozzies are going to be out in four soon. I've got a mozzie net, but I, if I have a fire going, then hopefully a bit of the smoke will keep them away. So let's see how we go with this. Got a bit of coconut, dry coconut husk. This one's not very dry, so I'll see how I go with it. Make a bit of a bird's nest with it. And I've got this stick, whatever it's called. 
um, that uh, yeah makes a lot of spark. Let's see if I can get any of it to catch. I suspect this is still a bit damp. Plenty of spark being made, not catching very well. Suffice to say, I have fire. Oh. Just needed another bit of husk that would catch a bit better and keep burning and. We're away. Oh, good. I have fire! I have fire! I have fire! Woo I guess it's not going to be too hard to find coconut crabs. They're everywhere. As are the mozzies. nuts of collecting coconut crabs. Enough there for a meal. I could pretty much just eat coconut crabs if I wanted to. So I'll keep them in there for night the night and have them for breakfast. Lovely. Quarter past six in the morning and I'm off for my first walk around the island. See where there's a better place to stay than I am so I don't get eaten by mosquitoes. I doubt it, but hey, gotta have a look around. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time building my shelter until I decide for sure where I wanna stay. Pretty gorgeous morning. Three hours of walking and Two bee stings from some kind of killer bee that, man, it hurt. Um, I get to the end of the island. It's a beautiful place. Uh, I came here because there's apparently a track just up there um, that will take me to the lake. And I might also get a f some enough phone reception to be able to send a text to family at home. And the mozzies are out in force, so I need to get some repellent on. Oof. Because I underestimated the time it took for me to get round here, I've unfortunately run out of all my water. So, doing another two to three hours back with no water in the hot sun is not really an attractive proposition. So, one of my family gave me this tiny little um, survival kit that just looked like bits of string actually it had little fishing hooks and all sorts but I've been able to get this bit of string off so I'm going to tie my uh, machete to a long stick and cut some coconuts out of the trees and fill my bottle up with coconut water Woo. One coconut tree with suitably green coconuts full of nice fresh water. One machete, one long stick, one piece of rope. Let's see what we can do.
nine coconuts from that haul. Now time to fill up my bottle with a few of them and I'll leave the rest here for when I come back from my walk so I can refill my bottle. That should give me two, maybe three fills up of my bottle. Well, let's start opening. No, no, no. Ooh, more than half a bottle. There's a whole lot of wastage. Walked for an hour. Now I'm at Lake Vuangaba, which is right in the middle of the island, biggest lake in Fiji, um, quite expensive. One coconut crab, quite large, ready to rip my head off. to eat you. And on the menu tonight we have coconut crab cooked in coconut milk. Hopefully it's going to be delicious. Apparently you can cook it in water in the because it eats coconuts all the time. Uh, the water just fills up with coconut oil anyway, so let's see how rich it is cooked in actual coconut milk. Yum. I spent most of my first day on this island walking along the length of it and uh, walking the track through the middle of it to the lake. Uh, pretty uneventful. The On the way back I managed to secure myself the coconut crab so that was dinner last night tasted a bit like crab meat but yeah had a slightly different taste really in a nice way it tasted like crab, crab meat with a little touch of jet fuel <laughs> um, it was obscure maybe the way I cooked it or something I don't know but certainly perfectly edible and uh, two or three medium-sized land crabs would, um, coconut crabs would make for a good meal I think. So I might go back there uh, and get some more but I think today because I did such a lot of walking yesterday and I'm trying to work on fairly limited food I probably should have a rest day today so I'm just going to have a swim out um, in the uh, area out the front here, see if I can catch some fish. Um, it's all very easy swimming in the lagoon, quite safe, there's not really any waves. Um, and if I take a, uh, one of my arrows tied to a stick, I might well be able to stab myself a fish or two and get something for breakfast. When I first uh, read about this island, I understood that the People who used to live here uh, it left the place in 1860 after a large number of them started dying of cholera. So they dragged all of the dying into the caves 
and uh, left and never returned. And that they never returned because they thought the ghosts of their ancestors were still here. Some of them still do think that their ancestors aren't here, but the reason they've never returned is that the island is completely infested with mosquitoes. I, if I don't wear this, this bodysuit, I will just have a swarm of them over me. Fortunate that I bought a, a mosquito net because I wouldn't be able to sleep here otherwise. Uh, places wherever you go just completely infested. So unless you're swimming or walking, um, you have to have some sort of cover or mosquito repellent. I've got some mosquito repellent, but it's really a little bit uh, short. I'm running, running short on it now. Over the back, you can see the waves crashing on the coral reef. Unfortunately, I missed a bit, few days of filming. Uh, it's been a high moon for the last couple of nights, and two nights ago, the tide came in so high that it actually swept into my camp. And that's not so bad, you can clean that up, but it unfortunately took my major solar charger, which limited the ability to recharge my phone, which I'm using to record at the moment. Um, I've just had a uh, visit from fishermen from the neighbouring village and they're kindly going to bring back a charger for me tomorrow, or not a charger, a, a solar bank of mine which they'll have charged up so I've now got the luxury to be able to do a bit more filming um, and hopefully I can keep that continuing. Um, in the last few days uh, not a lot's happened I suppose. Some of this washed up on the on the um, uh, from the tide, and I was able to fashion it. I cut a big piece of it and made it into a fishing net, um, and so that's actually out in the water now. 
hopefully catching me some fish. You pick up some pretty beautiful shells while you're walking around. I found a broken spear gun which is a prized possession out here so I gave that to the fisherman who came yesterday. Um, the home as you can see has taken a bit more of an upswing. Um, spend a bit more time rebuilding it and making it a little better. It's got some shelter around the front. Put a nice nail to big log in front to stop the debris that might come up if the tide does wash in. It's not the tide that's the problem, it's all the debris that ends up being dumped into your camp which takes a bit of clearing up. Um, yeah, and so the ne next few days I'm just going to try and do a bit of fishing out the front um, and at night time I'm going to walk along the cliff face here and see if I can find some coconut crabs. I've not felt hungry at any stage actually. Um, yeah, it's been amazing. I thought I'd be starving most of the time. I've got lots of water, there's been no rain um, and so fortunately I brought a reasonably large amount of water and that'll see me through. Uh, if I'm lucky I'll get a bit of rain soon. I've, my tarp's set up in such a way now that I'll be able to collect runoff of water in one corner. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing at the moment. lesson for the day. Um, different types of coconuts on the island. The three main ones anyway. Green coconuts, cut them straight down off the tree. Great for um, water. The coconut in them is very thin and wet. Not particularly appetizing but the water in it is you can drink it all day. Apparently if you drink more than about four of them in a day you can get a bit of diarrhea. I haven't had any issues with it yet. Uh, just your standard brown coconut. Um, that'll have a bit of milk in it. It'll be far more milky um, fluid. Coconut milk. And the coconut's more like the coconut you would see in most countries. And this, the stuff that they, I guess they desiccate today. To uh, turn into coconut for cooking and the like. But the prize, in fact, is this the coconut that's gone to seed. Um, if you cut that open, you find inside this little morsel, um, which is it's like finding a cream bun in the middle of the ocean. It's soft and spongy. And it is sweet and delicious and a little bit salty too I think for them to go to seed like that they actually have to have been into the ocean to activate them I don't know this I'm, I think that's right but there's a certain slightly salty taste to it as well and then when you're hungry three or four of these coconuts will fill you up mm. That's your lesson for the day. Now for dinner tonight, we have some crabs and giant crabs and coconut crabs. When I say giant, it's the pincer on one of them. So, oof, coconut crabs are little babies, but That'll be enough to get me through till the morning. So, on the menu this morning for breakfast is 80 limpets or cockle shells or whatever they are. This is an hour and a half of, of uh, 
shelling these things, shelling about 80 of them. And so this is my breakfast. Gave them a cook. Tastes a little bit like power. It's a lot of work for breakfast, but one thing you got on your side on an island like this is time. Mm. Today the Brianna should be going past uh, for the first trip. I'm going to catch the next boat which will be in two weeks time. And disturbingly it should have gone yesterday and um, that would have meant that I would have uh, well, it just makes me concerned somewhat that they keep pushing them out a day. I've already had to move my tickets home once just to uh, make sure that I get my flight and I'm reliant on the Brianna coming around the 6th at the, or 5th at the latest, 5th or 6th. One thing up my sleeve is that the day I'm flying home is a Sunday and the boat always aims to be back in Suva for Sunday so that all the crew can go to church with their family so he is hoping that it's on time next time I'll, I should see it coming past uh, and I'll try to film it um, I'll try to film it if I see it I haven't had much luck fishing lately. Um, fishing with fishing line out there is not that easy because there's nowhere to sit so you're sitting on jagged um, rocks and being buffeted by waves even at low tide the odd waves coming through so yeah I just haven't found that very effective. Uh, my bow and arrow have been hopeless for fishing. I've got a fishing arrow but um, no good, no good. So. My only chance is this net that I've constructed. This washed up plastic netting. Um, I've just refined it a little bit more. It wasn't catching any fish and I figured that this mouth here was just a bit too sharp and spiny and uninviting. And the neck to it was a little bit too long. So I've just shortened the neck to give more cage area. And uh, yeah, we're going to throw it out today and see whether that uh, gets me anything. It's amazing what washes up. I've got all sorts of buoy options of varying sizes. Those are the ones I'm using at the moment. A nice metal one. So let's see how we go. trip to the end of the island where I can stand on the end of the rocks and shoot down at fish with my arrows. See if I have a bit of luck catching fish. Much bigger fish down there too. Only problem is I've got to lug them all back. If I do catch some, although I can get light a fire there, I've got everything to light a fire and yeah, stay down there for the day. It's about a four to five k walk, which isn't that easy during high tide, but it's low tide now, so I'm hoping that I'll make good progress. The day a fish caught down the end of the island with a hook and line. When you catch the fish, you catch them fast. As soon as the hook hits the water, they jump on. If they don't jump on straight away, you might as well go somewhere else. Second fish in the last two days. You can just make it out in the distance. That's the Brianna coming on a Sunday. Disconcerting. We have to check on the arrival time for the next trip. Got about a week left to go. 
Oh, what I wouldn't give for a shower and some clean clothes and an insect free room. I'm just itchy from insects. I woke up this morning, my hands were just covered with these little tiny biting midges that left all these lumps. Um, but otherwise, pretty easy. Um, Pretty easy existence. <laughs> I've got the food covered. I could get enough drinking water if I needed it. I can catch fish, catch coconut crabs. Uh, yeah, there's plenty to plenty to do. Just riding it out for the last week. I think the owners of the island have got their 12 year old boys coming to stay with me for the last few days. They just want to spend some of their holiday week with me. Um, I figure why not. I've had a couple of weeks to myself and I've got this survival stuff down pat. <laughs> why not? So let's see how that works out. And now it's the last day where I'm heading back to Kambara to try and find my way home. I've heard that the Brianna might be coming on the 9th, which is two days too late. So I might have to find another way to get up to uh, La Kemba by the 4th so I can fly back to Suva. Um, so this is it. The boat's here to collect me. Just loading everything on. We've finished packing up. And yeah, that's it. Three weeks on a deserted island done. Although the last four days with a 12 year old, <laughs> which was not so bad. Uh, yeah, that's it.
Io tu rande, capo, se ne è molto bene.